Good morning, Sojo. Welcome to live Sunday worship. If you're joining us for the first time today, we'd like you to wel welcome you to Sojo Live. It is our prayer that you receive a blessing for being here today. We know God's got a special plan, and we're excited that He chose us to worship today. You know, it's amazing. As I came in this morning, it's raining, and uh, I'm here with Pastor Corey and the other Eric and Jordan, and uh, just the four of us in this room just talking and uh, planning for this morning. You can really feel the Spirit of God. There's an excitement. There's no disappointment. There's a joy. And when people get together, whether you be at home or here in the office, there is a joy when people get together to worship the Lord. And that's what we're going to do this morning. This is your official countdown to Sojo Worship. You got just a moment. Go ahead and get yourself a cup of coffee. Get your Bible. We're going to be in John chapter 1 today. But here's the most important thing. Share this live feed. Just take a moment. I know it seems so small, but there are people right now who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. And it's as simple as a share. Just go ahead and hit that share button, hit it, and watch what God does. In fact, wherever you're watching right now, go ahead and send us a little comment and tell us where you're watching from. Whether you're in Gastonia, California, Charlotte, wherever you're at, just say, hey, I'm here, I'm watching from Charlotte. We know God's got an amazing service planned for us. We're going to start here in just a moment. So as you're getting your copy, opening your Bible, sharing this live feed, why don't you tell us just a little something? What is your favorite Halloween candy? What is it that you're hoping your kids bring home a ton of this year? I know it's silly, but we want to know. In fact, for, for my family, uh, we try, I, and I'll tell you, we don't get it perfect, but we try to eat healthy throughout the week. But there's that one day that you just have that cheap meal, and we're going to settle it right then on October 31st when my son brings in a ton of candy. And I'm hoping for some Reese's Cups. So, what's your favorite candy? If I'm going to blow out my meal plan, it, it, I'm going to hang my hat on a Reese's cup. No, not just one. I'm, I'm going to hang it on a few. So, go ahead and comment. Where are you worshiping from today? Let us know. Number two, what's your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, we want to know that too. And as the service progresses today, and Pastor Corey delivers a message in John chapter 1, let us know how that impacts your life. Listen, don't be afraid to make a comment. In fact, we encourage it. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that heart button. Say amen. If you have a question, let us know. Because most importantly, when this is all said and done, we want to know how God impacted your life today. It's not just about how many people we can get on Facebook. It's about how many people we can reach for Christ. So don't be afraid to ask that question. Don't be afraid to hit that like button. Don't be afraid to comment. Give us an amen. Tell us how we can uh, connect with you throughout the week. If you want to know the Lord is your Savior, let us know. Say, hey, that's me. I want to know. Send me some information. Private message us. But we want to connect with you. But most importantly, we want you to connect with Jesus Christ. Get ready. God's got a special plan, a special service for you today. I know you're home and you're comfortable with your family. But I'll tell you what. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you can't lift your hand high. That you can't close your eyes and just lift up your heart to the Lord. And we're going to worship Him today. Amen. Are you ready?
unfortunate. I'm sitting, I'm sitting sat here thinking about we've been at Papa Ross for four months with that one Sunday that we had to miss because of rain. And we go in and we dedicate our building last week, and it's wonderful, wonderful to see so many scriptures and so many prayers and so many promises written all over the walls. And it just makes me continually to long for those days when we worship together in spirit and in truth. I'm excited for the message that I have for you. Just like Eric said, we're going to be in John chapter 1, one short story, three short verses, John chapter 1, verse 40 through 43. But I do want to ask you guys to do me a couple of favors this morning. And the first favor that I would have you ask is like, maybe there's somebody on your heart you've been wanting to ask to come to church for the last few weeks, last few months, or maybe you're here with us for the first time and somebody shared the live feed and so you're here because they shared the live feed. And I just want to thank you for joining us. If you are here and this is like one of your first times watching with us, would you say hello, like right now in the chat box? We want to get in contact with you. So if this is your first time watching along with us literally just write the word hello like we're we're glad that you're here watching online with us this morning the second thing is if you only shared one time or one time or less i want to ask you a favor literally please share that live feed like right now like i'm gonna do it on my phone as we speak i'm gonna share and so i'm gonna ask you guys to share along with us so i'm sharing right now and i'm gonna ask you guys to share along with me because again, just like Eric said just a few minutes ago, you never know what the power of one share can do. So if you're watching on Lavas for the first time, please share that live feed. If, you, if you're watching for the first time in a long time, share that live feed. Whether you're in New York City or uh, New Zealand, share that live feed again because you just don't know who needs to hear about this message that I feel like God's laid on my heart, which again is called the power of a name. And with that... I want, to talk, I want to pray for a very specific name this morning. Some of you guys know that our $5 gift club this month is Love Life Charlotte. And we have a very special young lady who literally gave birth to a little baby boy named Avante. And she was a Love Life person that went in for abortion, but she chose life. And she gave birth this morning, but Avante is on a breathing tube. And so we want to pray for her and we want to pray for Avante right here, right now, before we get in to the word of God today. So if you would please bow your heads and pray with me. And as you pray, I want you to imagine that you're a young mother or a young father and you're holding your baby boy for the very first time and you're scared to death because there's a breathing tube. And I can understand that because my little girl, Eden, was on a breathing tube just like that. And so I want to pray and I want to lift them up and I want to pray for the doctors and pray that Avante gets off that breathing tube and gets to be held in his mother's hands and his father's hands as quickly as possible. So, Father God, as we talk about a name, God, this morning, we, talk, we, we pray for Avante. And we ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to heal Avante now. We ask you, God, to be with his mother, to be with his father in this moment right here, right now, where they are probably scared to death, God, that the baby's not going to be okay. We just thank you ahead of time that Avante is going to be healthy and going home with mom and dad within the week, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you want to say today. I pray for every person that's watching or will watch either live or later on down the road. But God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would meet us here again, whether it's live or not live. I pray in Jesus' name. Man, thank you guys again for joining us. And again, if you haven't shared or maybe you want to tag a friend, like if you got a friend that wants to watch, you can literally just write in the chat box. You can tag that person and then they'll get a notification and they can watch live or they can watch later. But you just say, hey, I really want you to watch this message today. Again, my message is called The Power of a Name. And I want to open up with this question. What's the greatest name that God could give you? The greatest name that God could give you. Think about that with me for one moment. What is the greatest name that God can give you? And I want to come back to that at the very end of my message. But I was sitting at my patio table last week with my mom, my daughters, and my wife. And my mom began to tell this story about how my name, for you guys who know me, my name is Corey, and my legal name is Thomas, but how my dad wanted to name me Jason. My dad wanted to name me Jason Corbett Alley because he didn't want another Thomas in the family. Now notice, the word Thomas, what it means is twin. 
So he didn't want to name his son because he didn't want to be a senior and he didn't want his name to be a junior. And so my mom is sitting here telling this story and then she goes and says, as soon as my dad held me for the very first time, he looked in my mother's eyes and he said, his name's Thomas. And so today my name is Thomas Corbett Alley. You guys don't know, my, some of you guys are like, where did Corey come from? I'll get there in a second. My name is Thomas Corbett Alley because my father looked at me and he wanted to call me his twin. He wanted to call me after himself. And I really want to take that back to that question, what's the greatest name that God can tell you? And as we get ready to read this very powerful story in John chapter 1, verses 40 through 43, I want you to think about this idea, the power of of a name. Some of you guys have had names called over you that you don't like. Some of you guys have had names called over you that you do like, and you realize that there truly is a power in a name. I have two daughters. One is Eden. Eden means beautiful garden. And Noel, which is Christmas or a present or a gift. And we name them very intentionally because we see those names even today in their very presence, active daily, every single day, that those names take on a personality of with themselves. And so as we read John chapter 1, here's what I want you to understand. That what's going on as we read this. John chapter 1 opens up with that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And it goes on to describe this Word, and we know this Word as the person and the work of Jesus. But then it starts telling the story of this other guy named John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the one who came before Jesus, crying in the wilderness to declare the promise of the Messiah that is to come. And so as we come into this story that we're about to read in John chapter 1, verses 40 through 43, there's a man named Andrew, and Andrew has been following John the Baptist as one of his disciples. And as Andrew is following John the Baptist, John the Baptist points to Jesus as Jesus is walking by, and he says this phrase, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, the Lamb of God doesn't take on the same personification as it does to them in that day because the Lamb was a metaphor of a symbolic sacrifice. That if you were going to take a baby lamb, a white lamb, a pure lamb to sacrifice, to atone for your sin, what John was saying is that here is the Messiah, here is the Christ. And it says this right before in verse 40. It says, Andrew... Simon Peter's brother, so that's very important to know, Simon Peter's brother, you know, Peter who walked on water, Peter who denied Jesus three times, Peter who then preached and 3,000 people got saved. There's, a, there's an, a, car, a, a character arc that goes on there. So Andrew, who is Simon Peter's brother, it says this, he was one of the two that heard John the Baptist and followed him. And then verse 41, it says, he first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah. Now again, that phrase does not take on the same personification in 2020 in modern day America during the worst possible election we have ever seen. But in this time, for 400 years, God has been silent in Israel. They have been waiting and watching and hoping for hope. And for the first time, in 400 years, it seems like God is finally unsilent. And Andrew recognizes this Jesus, and he says, We have found the one that God promised all the way since Genesis chapter 3, through every character that we've seen in the scripture. And he says, We have found the Messiah, which is translated in the Christ. And he brought Simon to Jesus. Again, I want to focus on that phrase. He sees the Lamb of God. He goes and gets his brother, and he literally brings him to the feet of Jesus. And here's what I want to make do about this, is who in your life do you need to bring to the feet of Jesus? You can't take them to Jesus and save them, but who in your life today can you literally bring to the feet of Jesus. Now that takes on a whole different thing. I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds, but I really want you to notice that the first thing that Andrew does when he recognizes who Jesus is is he takes the one that he cares about the most and he brings him to Jesus. And my question is simply this. 
Who do you need to bring to the feet of Jesus? I'm sitting with a police officer this Wednesday afternoon. His name is Richard. And Richard is talking about all the struggles and the toils of being a police officer in these days. And I, he literally says, he, he, he cuts through all that and does not care about any of that. And he says this, I'm only concerned with one thing. As this world gets worse and worse, is my friends and my fellow officers who are going to hell because they do not know God. And he literally says, the only thing that I'm concerned about is not the political unrest. It's not whether I'm treated well as a police officer. He says, I'm concerned with my fellow brothers in arms who do not know Jesus. And I want to simply ask you a question. Who do you need to tell about this Savior, about this Christ? Who is your one? And if you recognize the fact that you do have a one, if you recognize that there is somebody that you need to tell about this Jesus, that you need to bring to the feet of the Jesus, I'm asking you to do me a very simple yet powerful thing. Right in the chat box, I do. Right now, if you recognize, like Richard, there are people in your life that if they were to die today, they would die not knowing this Savior, this Christ, this Messiah. I'm asking you, and you realize that you need to be the one. Like, you can't save them, but you can bring them to the one that can save them. If you recognize that, I'm just asking you to write a phrase, I like a marriage ceremony when you say I do to your spouse, like right in the comment box, I recognize that there's somebody that I need to carry to the feet, right? I do. And I want to give you four ways that you can simply do that. Number one, it seems so overlooked, but it's the most powerful thing that you can do is pray. Literally to get on your knees before God and cry out their name and ask the Lord to give you favor that you may bring them to his feet. What greater way to start to bring that person that you say I do than to literally bring them before the feet of God in prayer. To ask God to please soften their hearts. To ask God to please give you opportunities to bring Jesus up. To ask God that they may somehow in their own lives be looking for God, looking for the Messiah, looking for something greater than themselves. And then all you have to do is step in the gap to please intercede on their behalf. The second thing that you can do is you can share the gospel with them. And this Tuesday on our Teaching Tuesday on our group page, I'm literally going to share with you a very simple technique to share the gospel involving three circles. If you can draw three circles, you can share the gospel this way. So the first thing you can do is you can bring them to God's feet through prayer. The second thing is you can share the gospel with them. And I'm going to give you something how to do that on Tuesday through Teaching Tuesday. And the third thing that you can do is bring them, not just invite them to Sojo or to a church or to any, any gospel preaching church. So pray for them, share with them, and then literally take their hand and say, I will, I will buy you lunch if you'll come to church with me. So please come to church. And as we get ready to move in our, our, our awesome, incredible new space, it's going to be what an opportunity to do all three of those things. I noticed that in that scripture, and so I had to bring that to you. But as we'll go back into the story, so Andrew is literally bringing his brother to the feet of Jesus. And I want you to notice what happens when Andrew, remember Andrew's following John. John says, behold the Lamb of God. He runs over to Jesus and wants to follow him. And not only wants to follow him, but brings his brother, Peter, the one who said, you are the Christ, the one who walked on water, the one who denied Jesus three times, the one who then preached 3,000 people got saved, the one then who got crucified upside down for this Christ Jesus. He comes and he, he says this. So he brought him to the feet. He says, when Jesus saw him, he said, you are Simon. This is his name. He says, your name is Simon, the son of John. This is your regular, ordinary name. This is the one that everybody knows you by. Like, my government name is Thomas Corbett. This was Simon's government name. He says, you are Simon, the son of John, but you will be called Cephas. Now, that doesn't sound like a great name off the top. Until you realize what Cephas means, we translate it into modern day to Peter, but that word is Petros. 
rock. He gives him a name of strength. And I want you to think about this. Sometimes all of us need a name change. We see in the scripture that Jacob in the Old Testament becomes Israel, that Saul in the New Testament becomes Paul. In the Old Testament, Abram, who means father, now becomes Abraham, the father of many nations. Now we see Simon, the son of John, becoming Cephas or Peter, which means rock. And it gives you new translation to when Jesus says, yes, Peter, yes, Petros. And upon this rock, I will build my church upon your name. You know, some people believe that Peter was the very first pope of the church. That upon this declaration, this Peter, this rock, that Jesus would in fact build his church. What are some of the names that people have called you? Some positive, some good. You know, some people call me father. Some people call me son. Some people call me dad or daddy. My favorite is daddy. Some people call me brother. Some call me friend. Some people call me baby. I, that's, that's another one I, I really like is baby or stud muffin or hot stuff or you know, you look super hot today, which Betsy tells me every single night, you guys. She'll literally just type in the tap, chat box right now that she, every single day I come through the door, she calls me stud muffin and how hot I look, which, you know, you know, I'm just joking. You know, but other people call me stupid. Some people call me worthless, lazy, no good, hard-headed, dumb. Fat. You know what some of the worst names that people call me are the ones that I call myself. The names that the enemy seems to overtake and speak over me in times of weakness, in times of tiredness, times of adversity, times when I need to know what God's name is for me, but the enemy seems to come into the gap. And again, I really believe that sometimes and right now so many people they need a name change. You see, names can be overpowering, even debilitating. Think about that. Names can be overpowering, even debilitating. But the right name can empower us to become. The enemy fills the gap, and the enemy says that you are weak. The enemy says that you are worthless. The enemy says that you are too far gone. But God says something altogether different. So many of us in here, in this chat room today, they need a fresh start. We need a fresh start. We need a new identity. We need God to come over us and say, no longer do I call you Saul, but now I call you Paul. No longer are you Abram, but now you are Abraham. No longer are you uh, uh, a, uh, Peter or, or <laughs> I'm sorry. No longer are you Simon, but now you are Cephas. So, so many of us need God to speak the words like this today. I call you forgiven. Today I call you chosen. Today I call you redeemed. Today I call you son or daughter. I call you approved. I call you loved. I call you conqueror. I call you masterpiece. I call you beloved and, and fearfully and wonderfully made. You see, those of us who accepted Jesus, those of us who have found our identity in Christ, those of us who say less of me and more of him, those are the names that God speaks over us, forgiven, redeemed, uh, masterpiece, fearfully and wonderfully made. And I want that for every single person in this chat room today, whether you watch this live or not live, I want you to be able to speak in your heart and know truthfully that the Lord God calls you a name and he calls you approved and he calls you forgiven and he calls you son and he calls you daughter. But here's, here's what I realized. If you can control the name, you can control the narrative. If you can control the name, you can control the narrative because the enemy will never stop speaking death over you. 
It never stops. It is a constant war over your life day in and day out. But when you know who you are, you can tell that enemy to go where he deserves and where he belongs and where he will be forever when the Lord comes back. If you can control the name, if you can understand what God sees in you, not what you see in yourself or what others think they see in you, if you control that name, you can control the story. You can get past those hard days. You can overcome the adversity that you face. And so many of us either are that person that need an identity change, or we know somebody who needs an identity change. Like I told you, my name is Thomas Corbett. Thomas means the twin. Corbett means the raven, which sounds pretty awful until you understand what it means See, for the longest time, I thought Corbett meant helmet. Literally, I, I thought that my middle name meant helmet, hard-headed. So many years, even up until about seven months ago, I, I perceived that the name that had been given to me was a death situation, that I was going to be hard-headed for life. Until I went to a conference and they helped me realize that both Corbett and Corey mean the same thing. It means the raven. Humorous, intelligent, optimistic, sociable, creative. And as I saw my name change, I saw my identity shift. And again, I want you to realize that our identity, when it's found in Jesus... It changes us all together. And sometimes, sometimes, we need to live. Jordan, you can come in, brother. Sometimes we need to live up to the name that has been given to us. Sometimes we need to live up to the name that has been given to us. I asked you a question at the very outset of this sermon. What is the greatest name that God can give you? And I want to tell you what it is. It comes from this passage in verse 43. It says, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Jesus was about to embark on his ministry. He literally is about to go and do his first miracle turned water into wine the first of seven that we see in the book of John and he turns around and he finds Philip and he says a phrase to him follow me think about that follow me what has changed 2,000 years later to the follower of Jesus has Jesus stopped asking us to follow him Every day for the rest of your life, the question that you have to answer is, what is the greatest name that God can call me? And I want to simply present to you that the greatest name that God can call you is Faithful Follower. Think about that. Faithful, where it means true. Follower means one that goes after. A truthful person who goes after what? heart of God, the ministry of Jesus. Andrew recognizes who Jesus is, the Lamb of God. He brings his brother named Simon. Jesus takes one look at Simon and says, no longer will you be called Simon, but today you will be called Cephas or Peter, which means rock. He gives him a name of strength and he looks back as he's getting ready to embark on his journey. What you don't know that's told in this is found in Luke chapter 4 because literally what happens is, is that Jesus is on the lake and he tells Peter and he tells Andrew to, 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 to uh, cast the net on the other side of the boat after they've been fishing all night long. And they pull up a catch that was no way something that they could do on their own, only a miracle of God. And he looks at them and he says, no longer will you be called fisher of men, but today you will be fishing for men. 
I know I said that wrong. No longer will you call fishermen, but now from now on you'll be fishers of men. Come follow me. And so I want you to insert your life and your name into the scripture. Verse 43, it says, today, today, Jesus decided to leave for your work, your family, your home, wherever you find your feet going each and every day. And he found you. And he told you, follow me. How are you going to respond today? How you choose to respond today life choice for tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the rest of your life. I'm asking you today to choose to follow after him. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter the adversity, no matter the opportunity to follow him. But the greatest name that any one of us can have is not rich, it's not powerful, it's not popular, it's not influencer, it's none of those. The most, the greatest name that God could ever give you is faithful follower. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and ask that every single man, woman, and child who watches this would choose today who they will follow. There are so many different things that we can follow. We can follow politicians. We can follow after recording artists, poets, athletes, people in our friend circle. So many different opportunities to follow after a person, but there's only one who has found himself truly faithful to give our lives to. His name is Jesus, and there are so many people on this today that need to choose. As for them and their house, I will follow you. person that's watching this video and when you look at them the first phrase that you will say is well done good and faithful servant enter into the rest of your master it's in your name I pray God
mountains bow down as we lift him up. There is no other name. There is no other name. Jesus Christ our God. So we're almost done. I've got a few more things I'd like to share with you guys. The very first thing is, is even though we can't gather in person, that doesn't mean that it stops, right? And so one thing that I really want to tell you guys about is the opportunity for us as a church to give. The finance team this week, as we're looking and going to our new space, all the things that are going on, I ask them to begin to pray as we put our budget together and pray towards like what's a number that we need to put out to our congregation that we can pray towards and start aspiring to a weekly offering giving. And so that number is thirty two hundred dollars a week. That's that's the number from our finance team that has been given. And there's two things that I, I need you guys to take action on. Number one is pray. Pray to the Lord and ask Him that as a church together that we could bind ourselves together to not just hit that goal, but to exceed that goal. Because again, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto Him who is able to do more than we could ever ask or imagine, abundantly more. And I believe that first off, we just got to get that out. That the only way that our church reaches its financial goals and aspirations that we can do ministry that we as a church come together and do that together. And so pray. And then secondly, give. And so the link's been dropped in the comment below sometime during this time. Let's give of our tithes and let's give of our offering. I want to pray right now for that. I've got a few more announcements. Father God, in Jesus' name, you know my heart fear, my concern that revolves around money, God. And I, today I give that over to you. And I thank you in advance, Lord, that you are going to use your church collectively to meet the needs of the whole, that we can be a strong and healthy, vibrant ministry. So God, as your people give today, I ask you, Lord, to bless them. Bless them in so many more ways than just with money, but bless them knowing that they are contributing to this community with the cause to help people discover life, discover purpose, and discover peace. That we have to do it together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The second thing that I want to let you guys know of, and again, I'm going to drop another link, is our small groups. That we have so many different small groups that you guys can join. And so there's a link being dropped in the comment box that you guys can go check that out. Maybe you're new with us today or you're watching this afterwards. Don't be afraid to sign up for a small group. We would love to have you. We got digital small groups, we got youth small groups, we got young uh, 20s and 30s small groups, all kinds of different small groups you can look on there. So please make sure that you do that. The second thing that I want to drop again is another link. And we're doing a truck or treat. We're going to do a trunk or treat at Papa Rob's on October the 30th. And so what we need you guys to do is to sign up for a spot. Sign up for a trunk that you can decorate. Have fun with it so that we can meet a whole bunch of new families and kids and bless them with lots of candy and make lots of connections as we get ready to go into our new uh, incredible location. So do that. We also have a lot of work going on at our building. We have our men's group who's going over there tomorrow to help finish up tiles. Ceiling tiles, we, we completely ripped out the whole entire roof, started replacing all the ceiling tiles in the sections that we need ceiling tiles. It's days like today when it rains outside that it's just a reminder. Number one, it's getting colder outside. Number two, we need to be pressing towards our new home. Again, the same way it's going to take a collective giving together to get there, it's also going to take a collective working together, that sweat equity, to get into our new home. 
And so again, I'm dropping another link. That link is for a Google Sheet to sign up if you can help. Monday night, guys got uh, all the guys in my small group. You guys are going over there. We're going to buy you pizza, so please go over there and go do that together so we can finish that ceiling. Secondly, Tuesday and Wednesday, I've got guys from Ground 40 who are coming in free of charge to come and do work. If there's anybody that can come help on Tuesday afternoon and Monday morning, I mean, sorry, Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, click the Google Sheet, let me know. We'd love to have you over there. The last thing that I have for you is we all know Steve Hallmark is a great cook. Can I get an amen there? Eric's back here clapping. Um, Jordan's over here like he acts a bit mm, like that mm, kind of that long draw. <laughs> and so a fundraiser that we're doing for Thanksgiving is Boston Butts and Smoked Turkeys. Last year we did 30. Steve is literally praying for 70. 70 turkeys, 70 Boston but not 70 total. So if you like to order a Boston butt or a turkey, you can click this link and let us know. You can pay online, $35 per turkey, per Boston butt, some of the best meat you'll ever have in your life. So please make sure as you get ready to make your Thanksgiving plans, we've got you covered. And we're getting out there early this year, so that's incredible. I want to thank you guys for joining us online today. Sorry we could not meet in person, but thankful that this uh, technology exists, that we can do this. And it just reminds me, again, I said this maybe twice, I'll say it a third time. As it's getting colder, as this happens, I cannot believe that we went four months without having to miss a Sunday like this. And then the Sunday after we got to do our dedication, it happens. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a person who believes in coincidence. I'm a guy who believes in providence. I believe God's saying, let's get over there. Let's start the work. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys have a blessed Sunday. Go Panthers. Who are the Seahawks playing? Go Vikings. Go Vikings.